The following program is intended for a mature listening audience. Graphic and explicit language may be heard at times. The views expressed and opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily express those of this station or sponsors. Listeners are advised that neither the station nor owners and agents will be held liable for the content of this program. Rebroadcast, redistributed, or reused without the express written permission without the host or producer is not allowed. You are listening to Family Spirit International. Hey, Blaine, what is up? Oh, my God. It is Monday night again, ready for another episode of Family Spirit. I'm excited. And, hey, man, listen. I've got three. I know. I got three good uh, uh, <laughs> Darwin files Darwin for us tonight. Awards. God, I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Darwin Awards. All right. Both yes. of these, the first two I'm going to do is something me and Lee found. Uh, was it Thursday or Friday? And it just made us both laugh. So we put... Uh, oh. All right, what it is, this guy up at Niagara Falls, he decided he was going to take a jet ski with a rocket on the back of it and a parachute and see if he could jump off the the, uh, the, off the Niagara the Falls. Yes. Off the waterfall. Okay. Okay. You're in a bunch of water. Okay. So <laughs> it's going to get the rocket wet. It's going to get the, gonna get the yeah. parachute wet. I'm just surprised it didn't have acne on the damn side of it. <laughs> yeah, he just this idiot! Oh my God! Started to go off the thing and realized, okay, wait a minute, my rocket don't work, my parachute ain't gonna work, and of course he died. So, you know that that kind of stupid. Well, <laughs> Second yeah, one well. has to do with the water ski too, and. This one had me and Lee laughing so hard. We had to just put the phone down because we were laughing so hard at it. These, this <laughs> idiot is out on another jet ski or wave runner, and his battery dies. So what does he do? He just parks his thing on the river, runs up to a house, plugs in a cord socket, comes down with a positive negative in. But when he stepped off the water, guess what? He got electrocuted. <laughs> 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 Guess what? Water is and, wet. Hello. And I, I, you know, I, I, what? What's wet? It's a conductor of electricity. Yep. <coughs> so hard. Oh my god! That's but so funny. I it's I, I. Okay, they reached with the Manson family out of jail just last week. Uh, was it yeah. Van Houten? Leslie Van Houten. They Van let Houten. her out of jail. Yep. And I want to. I want to know what kind of what in the blue hell that <laughs> governor of California is thinking about when he let her out of jail. I'm like, okay, okay, dude. She had no mercy for her victims. Why should we have mercy for her? I'm like, I'm sorry. She got convicted. Uh, it was a death sentence, but California is such a sissy state that they couldn't go through with it, so they gave him life. Okay, I'm sorry. You commit. On a side like that, you should spend life until the day you die. When they caught well, you out of there, and circus you around the damn world. Yeah, they want oh, her out so is. that she yeah. can pay taxes because she's worth millions. Uh, and now she's got a book deal. So you know they, I guess they're oh, sure she does. You know what? Whatever they're just wanting that extra money. But you know what? She could probably release her own skincare because she looks beautiful. She was beautiful going in, and she comes out of prison looking that good. I was like, what in the world? Well, she must have been treated well. I, I don't well. think she should be a, I don't know. I don't, I don't think she should be uh, a profit off of her crimes. I know. That's uh, our, that's, I, I'm real that's surprised the, that Sharon Tate's sister. Oh, she's been saying things. I'm real surprised Sharon Tate's, Tate's sister, sister has not. Scared. Oh, yeah, I'd be scared, too. I mean, because she killed Sharon Tate like it was nothing. And then actually got in her refrigerator and Ate some food out of the refrigerator. Like, you know, she just didn't kill four people. I know. Those are sick times. 
And you know what? We're talking about uh, creepy stuff right now, but wait until our viewing audience sees what we've got tonight. If you love scary, <coughs> if you love good looking producers and directors, if you like musicians, um, th this is everything. This is all of it. We've got the Booth brothers in the studio. Yeah. You know what? Pro uh, producer Cooper, would you please roll one of those little films they had sent us? Let's play one of the scary ones. <laughs> I live in a house that my whole family has lived in, and every time you walk in, um, they're there. I feel an attachment is something that's not um, at peace. You come in this place, and there ain't all you actually can see, spirit children and all, but sometimes when you leave here, they'll be attached to you and come home with you. <laughs> They're screaming and everything. I just can't get them to stop. And it just felt heavy and like something was trying to get inside me and I couldn't stop it. It hit me in my, in my back twice. It touched me. I was so scared. It just followed me. It followed me home. House into my bedroom, into my dreams. It was horrible. Be careful, but you may bring home. Well, with all of that, let's go ahead and bring on the Booth Brothers, guys. There they are. The geniuses at work. Hey, how are you? Hey. Yeah, it's good to see you both. Thank you so much for all you've done with the uh, supernatural community. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. I deal with uh, I deal with haunted objects, and so I understand attachments and the way that you've been able to capture those moments, and uh, the way you're able to direct the people that were in your movie so that they could tell the whole truth and not hold back is absolutely genius. It's brilliant. It's scary. Yeah. It's real. It's all everything. <laughs> so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. you. So uh, you are on different streaming services now. <laughs> Studios live. Hang on. The studio's live. Ooh, give us a tour. <laughs> oh, my Lord. That's so scary. Oh, wow. That's on. Did not there's no this. Oh, well, we're sitting in the studio. And as you know, we, we do uh, TV stuff and paranormal stuff and we also do uh, movies and um, we've been focusing a lot on movies this year we did six finished six uh, movies last year um, we have wow. the attached the um, excess file and the possessed is now on the streaming on Amazon and on Tubi and we got nice. a, a nice licensing deal from Amazon to do an exclusive on the attached and there'll be more to come. We expect Children of the Grave to go up there. I'm ready for that. Nice. The Haunted Boy. And oh, oh that's yes. something. No, that came today. That, right. Yeah, that Friday. Exodus File. Friday, we got a letter from Amazon saying that we're expediting um, the um, going live with the air, air date on it because of the success of the attached and the possessed. And I think. What's humbling for us as paranormal filmmakers, as well as filmmakers in general, that we've been doing this a long time. And some of those titles are our older classics, like The Possessed, and that the longevity of that film and the letters we still get and the reviews and the people who see it to a brand new audience, you know, a new audience sees it for the first time. And their response, the letters we're getting, the comments, the reviews, I think it's hit 50,000 views in four days. Um, wow. Uh, and this nice. is, and you know, understand, we don't have a big promotional engine behind this. So it, it, it's really fan based, you know, and that's why we, we yeah. it's actually yeah. 90,000. Is it 90 now? 90, yeah. And 
And it's just mind blowing the longevity of these titles. And so we must be doing yeah. something right. And that's what's really exciting. And so what I was saying is Friday they picked up the Exodus file, which is one of the actually scariest right. ones we've ever done. And also, we just got uh, news that Apple TV picked up. Your Apple cash, TV just picked it up. Which is, uh, you know, that's really great for us. I mean, great Wonderful. for everyone. We're very happy. But, oh, but yeah. yeah, anyways, we've been in the studio. And if you want to see the studio, this is a, much. This yes. is a, this is a music studio. Let's see if I could. These are all the nice little buttons. Um, it's all uh, very cool stuff. It's all touch screen. And these are the latest in synthesizers and Pro Tools, which is what we mix. Surround like sound. Um, we do, you know, obviously the sound design and music for all of our films. And then it doesn't stop there, though. It, it continues. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, and over here is another nice uh, <laughs> wall of stuff. That is but um, that's just, I think, it, what we use it for anything is, is um, expression to uh, do what we do and we try to make everything we do epic including the paranormal stuff we've never been really good at just a little camera well, saying I mean, you know here let's do some night vision I you know which is cool and it's reality yeah. but we I think, started with death you know, tunnel death tunnel and spooked yeah way sanatorium yes. too great and that was way back in 2004 and we had never done yeah. a paranormal film I really had much of an experience in a paranormal world, so we did it. But we had so much stuff happen to us while shooting the movie for Sony. That was my next question. You knew what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your next question? My next question was, what has happened to you while you're shooting? Because you're on haunted yeah. location. Um, you know, you're on haunted grounds. So it's, how it's, do you... I think it's tough when you're filming on... Uh, we've been doing this, um, I mean, we actually launched Death Tunnel in 2004, so that was kind of the entrance to everything when we saw ghosts at Wayville Sanatorium where we were from. Oh, yeah. And to be honest, we were just filmmakers and musicians and artists and, you know, normal people, not saying we're sensitive any more than anybody else, but maybe because we express through art, we have more an emotional mm -hmm. communication. I can't fucking talk to anybody. I have to talk somebody through mm -hmm. music or through writing or something like that. So it was very heavy for us yeah. when we came back yeah. to Los Angeles after we were filming in Waverly Hills Sanatorium. And after that, we just did, we got hooked. And once, Guys, you, once you get into paranormal, you can't get yeah. out. I, I mean, know. We were filming, yeah, we were filming a scene just of a, it was a, a typical horror movie, a girl in a nighty, you know, walking down oh, yeah. the hallway but we yeah. it felt like a bag of ice walked through me and then when i went to look through the lens there was a thin film of ice on the front of the camera lens and it was humid in kentucky and that was freaky enough yes yeah. when i got the footage back to edit it for sony there was an image of a little girl standing right in front of the camera oh so damn that's we cool told, yeah we told sci-fi channel about it and they said if you could make us a documentary on your events of a film crew that goes to make a movie, but this stuff really happens to them, oh, we'll give yeah. you a series. And that's what started all, I think we're at 11 shows, paranormal shows. So that's what started it all. So much happened to us while we were there that we decided now all the way fast forward to the attached, which, which, which is doing really well, which is on Amazon, Apple TV, and Tubi and multiple other platforms, but we're not allowed to say them until they're released. That's the contract we have until mm -hmm. they're live. But those other three are live right now. You, all your viewers can go see that. But nice. what's interesting is our niches, before we write the part in the movie, it's just a motion picture movie or the actual documentary, we investigate the place and we investigate it with multiple teams and we ask mm -hmm. them their story and try to get their story and their story becomes their voice through our films. So we tell them as if they're telling their story. The ghost, of, the, we, they, yeah, the ghosts yes, tell the story. Yeah, the spirits yeah. write the script. Yeah. Instead of- Oh, that's so cool. Instead of that's having awesome. a myth or a legend, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but yeah, actually yeah, yeah. Evidence backing yeah, like up when we go there and then when we start finding evidence and we're doing the history, 
that writes the script. So when we're going there, we're yes, kind of does. like, I have no idea what's happened here, but through the evidence and the EVPs, like when we did The Possessed, we yeah. got EVPs of, and there was no children allowed on the set of The Possessed. Um, that was back in 2010. And we came back mm -hmm. with an EVP of a little girl saying, why is daddy doing this to me? Aww. Which was oh, really God. heartbreaking because yeah, you are to it is. The kind of stuff that happened back then was horrible, or is still happening, but we had to fly back from LA to the Wasika Wonder House um, and find out what happened because I couldn't live with that. And we get a lot of stuff. Even yeah. to this day, we're still getting, mm -hmm. you know, insights of energies or spirits telling us what we should be doing in, in, in sense of what story we should tell and what we shouldn't tell. Like in you The know. Attached, St. Albans Asylum, I'll give a shout out to that place. It's an amazing place. If you've ever been to St. Albans Asylum. Um, but there's a story about a, a girl that was pregnant there who had a stillborn baby who oh, hung yeah. herself when they took the baby away from her. And she snuck oh. into the morgue and stole that baby and put it, it was in a jar uh, like in a you know a specimen jar, and she used to hit, hide it in a cubby hole, and we took an SLS camera, and we got an image of a figure putting something into this cubby hole, you know, not just an SLS dancing randomly, but actually yeah. the tragic event caught in time. But what really was mind blowing was we got a little figure of the child too, in the cubby hole. So two figures at the same time, repeating the tragic event over and over again. So yeah. like you really realize you're in the right place at the right time, not, capturing the story. And not to mention we filmed <coughs> excuse me, the recreation where it really happened. Yeah, we'd shoot it in the I real mean, place, even you know? in Death Tunnel, where the people were known to die of, you know, being freezing to death on the balcony from tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, a cures or so-called cures, we would film the, you know, the recreations of the events exactly what happened. And when we did that with Rebecca, she committed suicide and hung herself in the uh, suicide bathroom, what it was called. We okay. filmed that. And when that happened, it was really crazy. The energy and the way that people all felt it was, it was very heavy. The equipment shut down. You can't, you can't, this. you can't ever forget the stuff that, you feel, and I know you guys know this, the heaviness. Yeah. Oh the, my God. Yep. But you can't turn that into negativity because when someone's oppressed, that's all they have. So that's their hope mm -hmm. that you find that and turn it around to find the light. And I think, I think that's no. a really good point because what I'm really proud of in our work, and, and you will see that when you see the attached with the Annalise McKell story, which was the real Emily Rose, is we just don't tell for the networks because they like the scare but we tell the whole story like a lot of people don't realize oh, that that story the emily rose movie was a fine movie but they don't realize that she chose to die um to take that demon with her but at the end they exhumed her body to change the coffin out and when they opened up the coffin her body hadn't rotten and that oh. is indicative of becoming a saint and to, to annalise McKell. That's the greatest honor you can do. Who here can say, hey, I'm a saint? And they ended up mocking her through history, <coughs> um, trying to burn her parents' house down. Oh, my God. Uh, Demogging her grave. And when they changed the body out and found out she didn't rot, they built a monument to her, and they sainted her. She's the first female modern-day saint in history. Now, they don't tell you that in the Emily Love Rose story because it's mm. not horror. So what I love about us is yeah. we're here to give them closure or a new identity, not a monster, not a demon. Not everybody you know? that, you know, is to do with the dark side is a monster. <coughs> yeah. you know, I've learned that about you a long time ago, Christopher. You want to show the balance. Yeah, and but, you also, but you also got to realize that you need monsters, too. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, know, you we do. We need Absolutely. that to have good so it's a really you know it's about balance you know like we just said exactly. and if you're off balance that's where you're going wrong you know i i really i interviewed you over a decade ago and you talked a good bit about that and uh, you know it impressed me 
and I started looking for that myself. Now, I don't have uh -huh. the same, you know, I that you both do, but I started looking and it made itself known, the good and the bad. Let me, I'll, I'll try to go real quick, but this particular investigation was linked directly to the memory and the interview I had with you, Christopher. Oh. And I'm so glad, Philip, to have you on the on the show. I haven't had time with you, so I'm very oh. honored. I know Blaine is too. Oh um, yes. There's a legend about a, a hotel near where I live. It's called the Newberry Hotel, and uh, there was a lady that was pregnant, and uh, she got off the train and she ran to the hotel, checked in, and the next day they found her hanging. And there she was pregnant. So everybody just thought it was horrible. Well, we started doing the investigation and we heard a baby crying. We heard her. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't know. I had to put it all together and make it three trips total out there. And uh, the way it went was that she was in love with an Asian gentleman that was working on the railroad. And uh, he spoke enough English where he could understand what people were saying because of because of her she had been te you know teaching me, him english and there was a big embezzlement scam uh where someone bought a bunch of coal and of course coal is something that's you know used it's spent but during an um inner uh, what do you call it inventory it couldn't be accounted for so they were trying to figure out where that money went mm -hmm. and it was it was you know tens of thousands and during that time that's millions right more yeah. Than millions. Yeah. So everybody was looking for it and he walked in and, and or walked by when they were talking about it. And there was, oh, he's, he can't understand what we're saying. You know, he's not from the United States. He doesn't speak English or did he? And so he was, you know, being looked at by these uh, gangster type embezzlement, you know, shady characters. And here she is pregnant by him. So he tells her to leave leave and i'll come to you i'll i'm gonna leave too but you need to go ahead of me take care of yourself and the baby and i will see you tomorrow if you don't see me you'll know i didn't get out well she was in that windowsill uh in the, the seat on the windowsill looking out the window the whole entire day the next morning he wasn't there and she knew he'd been captured that's when she hung herself but the truth is she knew that the baby would look asian this is what she told me herself. Mm -hmm. She knew that it would be obvious that the baby was his. And that if he knew something, she knew something because clearly they were communicating in some way. Right? Yeah. So um, she did that to protect herself and the baby from being tortured. And who knows what would happen to that child? There's much worse things than death. Mm -hmm. And so the child had grown up in spirit, was there with them. They had a lovely existence. They were friends with a ghost across the, it's a little main street. It was on the other side. And uh, he was a civil war guy and they were right as rain, having a beautiful life existence together. And uh, I would have never seen that. I've just been, oh, she committed suicide. I wonder what she was afraid of, you know? And I found her name in the book of the hotel. It's, it's on the internet. You can look at it. Her name was Hattie Jackson. And oh, I, wow. This is such a, a love that could never be, but it's a beautiful love story. And they mm -hmm. did in the end, you know, I, I just thought about you, Christopher. I thought about the things that you told me that you and your brother do. Yeah, I just hope they're all together now, you know, the, the mother, father. I mean, and I think, yes, yeah, I think they're happy too. Yeah, what, what you described is wonderful, but it's like being a supernatural detective. And, you know, mm -hmm. you're taking the evidence and then, uh, filling in the blanks and coming up with a story, you know, and that that's really mm -hmm. wonderful because when we were filming Death Tunnel, the actress that was playing the nurse that jumps off the roofs of stories in Waverly Hills, she was pregnant with a baby that could have had TB, but she was unwed, mm -hmm. and back then it was really highly looked down upon. Oh yeah, so she oh, was yeah. playing that part. Now remember, we took a forty-five foot sizzle lift up the side of Waverly. We didn't do CGI or anything or cheated, we had her actually jump off the actual spot where the woman was supposed to have jumped off to imprint oh, wow. that energy into the film. So she jumped off yeah. the roof onto this 45 foot scissor lift five feet below up below the actresses on You know, and she's crying, she's in that old wardrobe and everything. And she jumped on there and 
and she landed and I said, cut. <laughs> yeah, that was wonderful. Wow. Yeah. She goes, you don't understand. I didn't jump. I felt oh, wow. like I was pushed. The actress said mm. So do you see what I'm saying? Well, hang on. Yes. Maybe she, in the real life, she never jumped. And she was Maybe pushed. she got pushed. So that's a good kind of point. Story. You know, that's the oh. beauty of the stuff. You write that into the story. Yeah. You now have a voice. Uh, otherwise, what you were just saying, they didn't have a voice. No one could tell that story. Yeah, like you yeah. just said, it's all looked down upon and to find closure. I mean, look, all these ghost shows, right? They go in there, and of course, if it's half an hour, there's not much you can do in 20 minutes, 26 minutes with commercials. Sure. But okay, we open the door. Oh, great, go, gotta go. Now what? <laughs> the door's open, you know? I yeah. know it. Think about that. You know, they don't have time to find closure. And for the families, mm -hmm. yeah. they're attached to that, like in Children of the Grave, which is coming out, that that just got picked up. I don't have a release date on that yet. There was That's all those orphan children. I know. Hundred Was it yeah. 250,000 children were put in orphanages across the United States of America? Yeah. And they were felt fed yeah. formaldehyde as preservatives in, in their porridge and their bread and their food. Their milk, yeah. And they ended up dying. And they gave them all unmarked yeah. graves. No names. And, you know... So when you go and do this stuff and you uncover all this stuff, it's it's actually it's an amazing thing. Chris and I always wanted to do two things. We wanted to do the Arizona in Pearl Harbor. We yeah. wanted to make a documentary, a yeah. paranormal documentary like we do. They wouldn't let us. They said it was disrespectful. Yet you can walk on top of the bodies mm. on Arizona. Like that's more respectful, Thank you. right? And second was Auschwitz. Yeah. Because we wouldn't let you do Auschwitz. Also well, wounded knee. Yeah, wounded knee too. But we thought, think about yeah. it. If their relatives, great, great relatives, wanted to find closure or some kind of thing, wouldn't it be wonderful to get EVPs from Auschwitz or from well, maybe Arizona find a missing piece that's still something to tell, know, connect yeah. their family? This you is know? beautiful. Yes, I now, do know what now, you're talking now, about. Guys, I have actually been to Auschwitz. I've actually yes, been there. Yeah. yeah, when I was in the military, um, we went through there. I went through there and stayed about seven hours. And wow. I have a piece and I'm of Empath Empath Media. Media. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, boy. And you did. Oh, it's okay. And I wish back then I would took a recorder with me, but I didn't out of respect. And plus, mm -hmm. we were just, you know, military guys mm -hmm. going over there to see what we could see. Uh, but yeah, the, the feeling there was unreal. It's like you could feel the anger from the Germans themselves. Mm -hmm. You could fear, fear the fear, the anxiety from all, all the Jewish people and gypsies and homosexuals, every people, mm -hmm. people they killed there. I know. And that would, I think you don't want to forget your history. You may not like it, but hey, that's what happened there. And I and think it would be nice, like you said, for some of the family to close. Well, in the end, we should give them uh, their identity back as a human being, right? A compassionate human being. Yeah. Because a lot of these shows feed off of them being demonic entities or um, bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or, people. Or, you know, they act like they're crazy, but. They weren't crazy when they got there. They ended up getting being crazy no. because they were put there. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. anybody. I mean, most of these people didn't leave because it, it tortured them in these asylums. And there's a lot of disrespect going on in the entertainment business in general. I know. <laughs> if it's not, uh, you know, paranormal yeah. demonic activity, then it's you know AI now, and you know just what they're doing to yeah. the streaming services and. Musicians cannot even buy a cup of coffee from what they make on Spotify, you know, and when the film business yes, is like nothing. that. No. We got to change all that. We really do. Um, I, I only agree. feel this off of subject, but I only feel bad because a lot of people that starting out in film and music won't even be able to make it to even create what they mm -hmm. want to share with other people because of the streaming, uh, you know, 
like I think Snoop Dogg said the other day, you knew what you were making back then, but now 300,000 streams, what do you make? You know, what do you make yeah. anymore? So, you know, I always try to tell people, please don't, you know, don't be on Spotify. Try to go to a streaming channel that pays a little bit more for the, for the, you know, the artists and for us even now, because now we're streaming films, you know, it's tough, you know. But I think what's, what's amazing about the situation is that we have to say who are the modern day Mozarts or Beethovens or Van Goghs nowadays with AI technology or the mm -hmm. way they keep artists um, just fed pennies because without creation and storytellers and artists to move the world with their work, um, a lot of these stories don't get heard or told. And especially in the paranormal field, it's become such a commercial industry. I think you can watch show, I'm sure you guys agree with this, you can watch one show, it's like watching the same one, no matter what channel you want, it's just a bit of night vision, mm -hmm. a bit of EVPs, yeah. a cold and here's a door slams and whatever. And there's not yeah. a lot of real um, craftsmanship going into that industry. No. And that's a shame because um, there's a lot of people's stories that are being told that are epic, that Spielberg, you yep. know, type epic stories. And mm -hmm. I, again, mm -hmm. think that we are like, well, we've been told this like the Pink Floyd or the Led Zeppelin of the paranormal because we put nice. so much production value and so much time into doing these things. Um, yeah. And not chilting the person's story like, it's just some commodity, you know. It's not cookie cutter. Yeah. Um, Chris yeah. and I were given a pilot. We actually did the Cecil Hotel, which they did, you know. Um, that place freaks me out. American Horror Story, which they mm -hmm. called it oh, hotel, right? I'll tell yeah, you, yeah. They would release it, but we went down there, and of course, it was just for a pilot, so we didn't really necessarily have permission to film there. I didn't say that, but, <laughs> but we I did go in them. there. We had hidden cameras just to, it was just to put a pitch together. It wasn't to put it out in the, you know, sure. but we recorded everything. And I, we stayed in the room that Eliza Lamb was in the oh, Asian Canadian girl that disappeared. And then I have to tell you the, the EVPs we got, I mean, they were like class A and they were like, she's in the water, it said said something about some kind of love triangle and then we heard banging Ugh. on the water tank and no one was on the roof it's got, funny get on the roof you walk down you those know? hallways in the Cecil hotel and there's surveillance cameras but they're all pointed towards the windows because of all the suicides yeah, yeah they still oh haven't put they jump out of the windows they haven't no put any kind of wire to stop you from jumping you still could walk and out there a great and deal of suicides down. in the history of of, of that place but it reminded me of walking into this very attractive seductive entrance and then they trap you and all these <laughs> dark energies are lurking around because all the people were very like out of a david lynch it's like walking through the shining very weird yeah the <laughs> shining they were like eight year old hookers with pink slippers on walking by us and we we're like filming and going like this is really weird and um, it had a really, really disturbing feel. Um, first thing I had to do, though, was taste yeah. water. <laughs> I was going to ask you, you know, yeah, did you drink black the water? The first thing I did is check the water out. But it was um, pretty heavy. But we like to do epic stuff, you know, whether it's the, we were the first ones ever to film inside the real Exodus house. We were the first ones to really bring Waverly Hills to the, um, true story of I mean, the real story that has happened there. I mean, to, um, to do, uh, uh, I don't make a shameless plug, but since the Exodus file just released on Friday and it's now on Amazon, what makes these shows, this one in particular, any of them different? Well, whether you believe in ghosts or paranormal or demonics or whatever, that's up to you. But if you're sitting in a room and you're just a documentarian and you're there to film and you're a professional filmmaker and you watch the guy tell you his neck is on fire. Okay. Keith takes a thermal image, a thermal image camera and shows 
this spot in his neck and it looks like a cross rising is yeah. rising oh. up his neck. Oh. And then we go over live uncut and he's got a welt of a cross rising up on his neck. Then you go, well. through, you know that story we follow every per place in that diary in 19, was it 1940? 1949, the Exodus diary, we got a copy of it. We went down there and went through it following the diary. That's Every the place they kept it. that boy, we went and did an investigation. And then, of oh, course, we had to recreate and film it, recreation. But my point going back to that is we went in the diary and sure enough found that the cross rose up on the boy's body too. Which a cross is not like that this. man is an X, an which X. is a cross. Yeah. Right? Roman numeral 10. They used to crucify people like this. Yes, this is yeah. became a religious icon. This was really how it was. Yeah. Roman numeral 10. And uh, actually, we actually, guys, they, they did put them on an X because it's easier to hold the bodies up. I, I, yes, I they did. Masters and then they started so, yeah, on the actual way. cross, it was rarely used and it was more suffering for the person on there if it was an X instead of an actual cross. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, I'm glad they perfected their uh, torture. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that, I guess. Oh, yeah. They had a lot of practice, though. Well, I think they perfected. They probably did. Yeah, I mean, obviously, hey. it's one of the biggest, um, you know, religious icons now. You we know what? Uh, interestingly, that type of cross is the known fairy cross of the of the uh, indigenous people of the southeast. If you find them mm -hmm. on the banks, there are a a cross that's an X, not yeah. The, yeah. We are at the bottom of the hour, and I want someone to, I want the people to see the other uh, clip you sent me. Very good. Okay. And then we'll be yeah. right back. Okay, okay. Brandon. Brandon. I think he's doing something. Brandon. <laughs> Woo. Can you hear me? Play the clip. <laughs> Play this clip. Play the clip. Well, we That's can sign a chance for you until it comes on. Oh, oh, I live in a house that my whole family has lived in, and oh, that's that's the first one. Yeah, and, I was gonna say and, that. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Blaine, did you see all those clowns? Uh, yeah, mm. not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. Well, well, I'll I tell you what. That. Well, yeah. the auction that's happening this weekend is yes, please auctioning, tell some of, auctioning some of the stuff from that show, and I have that that Gacy's clown outfit, clown outfit going on for auction. So, no Blaine, oh. that's something that you could wear to a prom no. or something. You wear on the podcast. You can no. wear it. You guys, let me tell, let me tell you, let me tell you the history of dolls and clowns. Okay, <laughs> dolls were originally made to house the souls of the dead. Clowns started out bad to begin with. In the in the early uh, Middle Ages in England and France, they had what they called the high women that would go in there and rape, rob, and pillage, and they paint their faces all up nice and smiley. Then you said the main man, okay, that started evil, and John Wayne Gacy's prime example that anybody that's a clown is evil. So, <laughs> <laughs> see, he's yeah. got he's got a yeah, picture of how all clowns are bad. Well, I'm not particularly into clowns, but if I took you downstairs right now, you would see. Uh, a room full of uh, dolls, a lot of ventriloquist dolls. I really love ventriloquist dolls. I can dolls. handle it. I just don't I like can. them. <laughs> I like all haunted objects. I, I can't well, that, I like them. Well, I like them. And that story from that is in the attached is that a friend of ours hmm. bought the armoire from the attorney of John Wayne Gacy. And when he bought it, it was locked. When he hauled it open, he was going to yeah. pick the lock the next day. But when he got up, it was wide open. And inside was three paintings that Gacy had done of Pogo. What? And ever since oh that happened, God. his building had shadow. He kept, People kept seeing shadows that looked like clowns and heard this evil laughing. So the attached is about the infamous, most infamous, famous cases that we we could get you know the most popular was like the Annalise McCall the actual exorcism box used in that exorcism or the armoire you know that was actually doing yeah. that so that's pretty amazing to to um have that energy to feel that energy I have it I can only yeah. imagine 
Well, oh we have God. that. We have that box downstairs. It's actually nice. Um, it's, Gus, it's, I'll tell you the worst. I'm sorry, Gus. Go ahead. I apologize. Well, and I'm saying it's subdued now because it's been blessed quite a bit. But I still yeah. keep it in a locked trunk. Okay. I don't blame <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. You know. well, I'll tell you another reason I don't like clowns. Clowns. We're doing an investigation here in Alabama. And this lady, we walked in the first room, and she had 75 porcelain clown dolls lined up against her wall. And as I opened the door, one of them little jokers lifted up and flew directly at me. My only response was, was to swing. And I hit it so hard, it bounced against the wall. When it hit the wall, I heard it go, <laughs> wow. And they didn't mess with me the rest of the night. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> I actually, I investigated a doll that was um, possessed by two people that were victimized by a serial killer, and they were hiding in the clown. So mm. I saw it as a, a really sweet place for them because he was just devastated. He couldn't protect her, and she was desert. She was upset. <laughs> I can't talk today. She was upset uh, about, you know, being attacked first, so... Well, the thing, you think about attachments and objects. Everybody goes to antique stores or they go to garage oh, sales, yeah. you know, and this stuff is really old. But if a, a child had a doll, say, in 1920 and or earlier, and that child loved that doll, and it's pure, innocent energy hugged that doll for many, many, many years. Sure. And then that doll goes on and on and on. Do you really think that that energy doesn't go into that doll? Whether it's oh, of course. It does. I mean, not everything is evil. I mean, not everything is. No, I, I think no. energy <laughs> energy is a key word. Energy you leave behind when you've had an argument. Energy, you know, mm -hmm. when something drastic, terrible, you know, sure, tragedy happens, it's energy that leaves it. I got a question. Was like a lot of your viewers and you guys uh, will, you know, I'm I'm sure a lot of uh, of us, uh, I mean, your viewers and are uh, seasoned, and a lot of people. What do you pick for protection? You know, is it a, a crucifix? Is it sage? Is it uh, crystals? Crystals? What do you guys use for protection? Um, I I Go have ahead, a, a particular skill that I use. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, is that like Liam Neeson's skill? I got a specific. <laughs> <laughs> I got a specific set of skills. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's um, usually I just invoke the powers of uh, the elements. And uh, by doing that, it's it's an angel type of protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we just, I just use energy right. against energy. I balance the right. energies in the room. The reason why the bad thing yeah. is so bad is because there's mm -hmm. nothing more powerful than <laughs> that in the room. So we bring in some more powerful thing that's, you know, positive. And then it just kind of, it's kind of like an acid in a base and then ends up neutralizing itself yeah you should never do it blaine what do you use for protection it's not a personal question i use I, I use no 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 oh, and I, don't, I use uh my spirit guides my ancestors um and i tell anybody that's doing this choose your whatever feels good to you if you're religious use your religion if you're not call upon your family members because every person according to native american history has seven generations of family on both sides, mothers and fathers sides, always around them. So yeah, they can actually use that. And, and if it gets real bad, I tell like, especially with children that we teach that have gifts, I tell them basically, okay, imagine three lights. You've got a white light is your first protection. A blue light is your second protection and a red is your final protection, but you can use a combination of all three. If you feel really threatened, use all three and call upon your ancestors because uh, they're supposed to be there to protect you. So that's, that's what I use. And I pass it, it on to other I think too. what a key thing is, Blaine, and, and is that we should never go into a place to investigate um, with the team or anybody when you're in a dark place, when you're emotionally troubled or weak. Thank will, you. Because, yep. I mean, and I quote this and, for the people who remember the movie John Carpenter's, um, what was that one? With Alice Cooper, Prince of Darkness. Prince of Darkness. Um, yeah. They took over all the homeless people because they had no will and they, they were vacant, vacant inside. They were numb. So, well, evil, uh, poverty, uh, 
Uh, yeah, you don't want to. Poverty breeds evil. Yeah, you know when you're in an emotional place where you're just numb or lost, that's a great place for them to vape. You know they can take over at that point. Really? But if you yeah. go like you were saying, light, you're a positive soul. You're there to help, and and you're so strong. They're not interested. They're interested in weak-willed people. You know, people yes. that are lost. Let me show you what protects mm -hmm. this studio. Okay. You yes, can. please. Yeah, please. I, I recently got into um, the artifacts of voodoo and hoodoo. Uh, this yes. is the, this is the one that protects the studio. Now, a lot of people are so scared of voodoo, and it, which is kind of not, it, which is really uh, they don't need to be. Oh, that's voodoo, beautiful. Yeah. It is yeah, the, beautiful. The, the, the shells. Uh, this is from Africa. The shells are, are a form of currency back then. It used to be money. Yeah. So. That's why they dressed him in this. This chap here is actually holding a child. And so, um, interesting, uh, I have quite a few uh, voodoo dolls, uh, real ones from Africa downstairs. Um, some of them oh, will wow. be at my auction, actually, that I will be letting go because I have too Wait. many of them. But this one here is particularly, he's holding a child. So it's basically, it's an offering to the gods to protect the children. So this is what this is the concept of is to protect. And of course, for me up here, my child is my creation, which is creation is children for us. It's like when we create a, a movie or a song. Yeah, that's beautiful. It becomes, that is beautiful. It becomes, yeah. it becomes our child. That. But this one protects our studio. This is, a, this is quite a few hundred years old. I have a few of these coming to the auction this weekend, but I have to say, um, I wish I could. There you go. A magic made of voice. I have to say that when you get into the understanding and of the voodoo idea with the the African village and the king and the queen of the village over there, and recently the king had died, and oh. she needed money to help feed the uh, tribe and feed the village. Mm. So I've been able to help her out by getting a lot of these artifacts and art from Africa and you know selling them and getting her the money to help but i have to say really studying and feeling the energy behind these things is all really overwhelmingly powerful as much as it was when i yeah. got the uh, exorcism box from annalise mckell you can feel and what it's about it's about the in invocation that you put in it the intention you put in it whether you're wearing a rosary or buddha beads or you put it it's when the nuns, this is not a rosary, but when the nuns would rub their rosaries for, you know, their whole life, the passion and the intention and the evocation of putting that belief into it, now you have it, you feel it. So when you're worshipping a voodoo doll or a crucifix or whatever it may be, it's not necessarily about whether it's true or not. It's about the intention of yeah. the belief that you put in it, and you can feel that belief which is positive because yes. there's nothing worse than somebody that doesn't believe in something. It doesn't matter what then, you believe in, you. It, but if you don't believe in anything, you are very absent of, of a yes. soul type energy or a personality or whatever it may be. Well, you've got to believe in something. If you don't believe in anything, you're going to be in a shell right to be taken over or to have an attachment. And that's what everybody yeah. asks is, you have all these things in your house. You've done all these shows. You've been all these places. Don't you guys have attachments? Don't you? When they come to our shows, uh, we'll be at Scarefest. Well, where are we going to be at? Scarefest? We're at Mid Michigan in uh, November. We're at Scarefest in October, and we're at Silcon mm -hmm. in September. And all these people, and we bring these items that are in our show, so people can actually see the real Exorcist diary or the real Exorcist box or Emily the dolls, which would. Their hair is actually the deceased children's hair sewn on them. Yeah. They got to feel the energy. And because of Annabelle, everybody's super scared. It's really silly because it's got nothing to do with a horror movie. It's got to do with uh, the way he grieved. Yes. When somebody yeah. once asked me, which is an interesting comment, I posted something that was for sale. It was a very cool Venturicus doll. He was uh, from 1910. He's really creepy looking. He was in a glass case. And somebody tried to call me on said, oh, I'd like to investigate that doll and something. And he goes, I never understood why they kept it in a glass case. How can a glass case stop it from 
you know, getting into. And I go, I've got the glass case to protect it from deterioration because it's old. It's got nothing to do with the fact that it's protecting you from a glass case or not. <laughs> it's got to do that you're protecting the object from deteriorating any more longer in the age, mm -hmm. you know? And the thing is, it doesn't matter if you truly believe in something, it's going to affect you, whether it's real or not, you know, because it's all about your psyche yep. and your belief system. I mean, if you're going to go to building like so many of these other shows and exploit these spirits or yell at them and try to get something on oh. camera or ratings, you could be yelling at a little child, you know. So oh, no. you have to understand that it's a gift to have a paranormal experience in the first yes. place. Thank you. It's a gift. And why are we doing it? To prove there's something bigger than life. It's just not us. We just don't die and we decay. But there's something out there that gives us hope to talk to someone that we sure. miss and love. Somehow we got sidetracked and made everybody evil and demonic because it's all the horror movies and all the TV shows yep. that seem to do that. But I think it's just enough for me of a high to meet a pleasant spirit or a sound oh, of a happy God, is it ever? Yeah. Versus, you know, a demonic entity. Yeah. You know, it's it, to me it's just as a rewarding experience. You know, people we we've done so many possession shows and we studied for years on on the documents from the Vatican, from all the demonologists all the research and, um, from our great teams that helped us and from what we put together. And I realized that really the most, if you haven't watched The Exorcist File, it's a really great show because we talked to parapsychologists, we talked to psychologists, we talked to everybody like, for instance, what would you happen if you put the devil on the couch in a psychiatry office? You know, why are you so evil? And you're gonna find out he's not evil. It's man that's the most evil thing. Mm -hmm absolutely man is the yep. most evil thing and the thing is that you know and what we found out is is that possession truly when you get possessed i mean a lot of i mean i know that everybody's seen it and worked on shows where you you know you're twitching and your eyes are going crazy and then you speak like the devil and all that stuff and you know that's a little overwhelming because yeah a lot of true possession truly is I have no hope. I, yeah. I can't find anything that makes me happy anymore. I feel miserable all the time. I'm mad at the world. That is a form of takeover. That is the yep. true concept of, of, you know, abandon all hope that enters. That mm -hmm. really is what it is. When you go into a place that is haunted, all you feel, feel is miserable. Like the exorcist house, when I went there last time, there's just no hope. And it that is, is the worst yeah. feeling in the world, it, is to feel this no funny hope. because that house, you know how you have a camera with a tripod and it's got a bubble level on it? Or yes. Yeah. You want it straight? Well, no matter how the level was level, every angle looks off kilter and the house is on built on a vortex. All the trees outside that house where they exercise the boy in Bel Nor in Missouri um, go crooked. And why do you think the odds are that they a boy comes from Maryland, he ends up in Missouri in a house that's on a vortex? It's not a coincidence yeah. at all. It's because the devil could grow stronger there. The whole thing. What's wonderful sure. about these stories is you realize in that story it was never the boy was never the target ever. And if you watch, if you're a horror movie fan, you watch the four exorcists, it touches bases yeah. on, on the fourth one when they ask him to choose who dies and lives and dies. Well, Father Bowden had lost 35 students that he taught in the Pacific War, he lost his faith. Who ends up being the exorcist? The guy who has no faith. So yeah. it ends up being wow. his uncle. I mean, this is amazing. People don't know this real story. And so it was to target the priest because he had no faith with his uncle because if they could beat the priest, there's the ultimate challenge. It wasn't the boy, right. it was a, oh, sure. the boy was a pawn. And so they kind of in the Exorcist trilogy and the, well, his fourth one, 
they kind of tell you that stuff. So anybody trying to break your spirit, you know what to do. Get away from them. Get them out of your get life. Get away. Yeah. If yeah. you've got these people that's always trying to rain on your parade, trying to break your spirit, trying to bring you down, you wake up in a good mood and now you're in a bad mood because the energy around you. There's only one way. You've got to get away from it all. You've got to be around positive energy and positive yep. which which you were saying you go in with light an investigation with that optimism yeah. you can't go in an in investigation being broken like that you have vessel you no. want to be an open door to, right. to be a takeover so you we might just put a party on your forehead <laughs> yeah we would turn people away from when we were doing ghost hunts you know at these places yeah. ourselves we were hosting we would turn them away if they were doing drugs and alcohol and or they were in or a they were up all night or they were drinking or they were actually truly their goal was just to be a debunker and they didn't even have any oh, god help me you know just this. like just like okay let's see what happens i don't believe i don't i do believe i don't believe i just i'm neutral that's cool yeah. but if you're going in there so negative right at the beginning you just, you know, it's not going to be a good investigation. No. And that's no. why, that's what I always tell everybody when we investigate, look, we sit up there and tell jokes. We laugh at each other. We get that positive energy going and we get the best results out of that. And I'll tell somebody before we go inside, if I see you provoke, I will personally take this size 14 shoe and shove it straight up your butt <laughs> as far as I can put it. And but. I've only had one person challenged me on that and he he got a size 14 boot print that's all i can say <laughs> on his booty you got his booty i sing motown i do i sing if i'm getting ready to go into an area that has been told okay this is a very serious situation i start out singing motown i've got sunshine and i'm cleaning all my stuff and getting everything ready and and uh most rg that's that's on the show with me uh with uh repossessed he would say what are you doing how can you sing that in a time like this and i said well you know i'm going to be the dominant uh personality in this situation you me and marika you know we're going to go mm -hmm. in here smiling and whatever's in there is going to yeah. be blessed and uh so he started doing it too and um marika would dance you know <laughs> so, so sing the town. <laughs> I absolutely love your piano in the background. I want to play it. Oh yeah. <laughs> that well is that a is that a grand or a baby grand? It's a virtual picture. <laughs> the virtual picture. It is. But Green I can virtually play it. It's okay. <laughs> Was well, yeah, a very good virtual. Oh, right on. <laughs> I yeah, love this when you play it. We're actually sitting under a bridge right now. This is a virtual picture too. <laughs> yeah, we'll investigate for food. Nice. <laughs> I'm actually I'm covering up my guitars. I've got them over here to the side, and so I thought I would put these yeah. up. I do like a folk sound. Yeah, if, I if just love them to go back there and play. You know. I'd like Gosh, him to go and play you know, the first few bars of Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. That would be awesome. Oh, he loves Queen. I would love for you, you know, the first time I ever talked to someone about you before I ever met you, Christopher, because like I said, Philip, this is my first chance talking to you. But um, it was Dan Guthrie, and he told me yeah. that he was at a paranormal conference with you, and everybody had been, you know, uh, investigating and having the after party and whatnot. And you were just super chill. And you went into the lobby and there was a piano there. And you played this most haunted lullaby that was just, he said he didn't move. He just sat right there. Yeah, they kicked and, me off that, actually. <laughs> the hotel asked me to leave. Well, I, we, we didn't hear that part. But that, uh, was, uh, uh, in, that was in, was that in Beaumont, Texas? Was that? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That was a fun gig. That was, yeah, that was, uh, I remember that show. He yeah. would not leave. He said he thought you were amazing. Yeah, I do that in all the hotels I actually play. And I bring a tip jar now, though, so I can eat. Good. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so tell nice me a, a bit. A cup of brandy got... and a cigar going. And... <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice I... yeah, there you go. Now, I know that you guys only are able to be with us the first hour. So, 
um I mean, it's coming up to that now so i just wanted to see if there's anything else like where would people be able to see your auction uh where yes. could we hear your music i heard something about a new music project uh you've talked a bit about your movies so you know is there anything well, else yeah well just basically the movies are on amazon prime so and tubi we're and we're getting more films up there all the time so if you just probably type in the booth brothers probably they'll come up but you got the Exodus file, you got the attached and the possessed, and Children of the Grave is heading that way. So there's I can't wait. and the unseen is up there now, and Soul Catch is up there, and Dark Place is up there. And Children of the Grave. And then a lot of them are going to Tubi. Some are still on Sci-Fi Channel, the older one. Not the older one, but the newer ones. We have a brand new film coming out. Hopefully it'll be out next year. It's called Never Blink. That's a horror movie. A fact creepy in fact you know what happens when you close your eyes and you can see it in the blink it's scary oh, as hell. Nice. Yeah. and um and then of course my auction is starts this this thursday to sunday and it's a facebook um it's not an event yes yeah, it's a facebook event but it's not live okay. so yeah, you'll okay. find the pages on christopher saint booth's facebook page or the haunted bazaar which is on facebook and i'm gonna have um lots of voodoo stuff witchcraft nice. pagan religious icons exorcism boxes as well as some religious stuff and there'll be some stuff from the attached that was nice. in the movie as well and a bunch of a lot of stuff and some incredible pagan jewelry and all that's so a yes. lot of fun <laughs> always does really well so See, I, I gotta, gotta look for that I you would love the, the jewelry. jewelry yes it's a lot that's of fun great. the jewelry is really yeah. cool it's like you know, really cool stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, I love making stuff anyway. So Yeah, it, you I, love it. it. And then Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. And, um, oh, thank you. Yeah, it, you check it out because it's um and the prices are really good too. So yeah. um, right on. Yeah. I have to check that out because I love yeah. jewelry. My, my daughter just yeah, all came you do is you join Iowa. the just you go to the discussion page and you'll see the pictures yeah. come up, and then you type in your bid underneath yeah. it and it if you win, you win, and that's all there's to it. Um, I have no. about usually about 300, 300 items each auction, and it helps pay the bills yeah. around here. So, uh, you know, as musicians, we're streaming now, it's not as easy as it used to be. Uh, no. yeah. well, I know, <laughs> but I, uh, I can tell you this, guys you just made my day because I work from home, so now I can go catch all y'all's movies. Why well, get paid to sit at home and answer two or three phone working. calls a day? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's um, working really, hard, but I it think takes that it worth it. The attached will, well, they all will make you think. But the attached, just especially the possessed, is an interesting movie. You probably yes. want to watch them. All the possessed is actually we interviewed ten or so different teenagers from around the United States, and none of them, none of them have met each other. And we asked them what their signs of possession are and what happens when they. You know get possessed and the, some of the stuff they say is overwhelmingly and that's oh, yeah. actually one of the things we learned what they started to say was actually in the bible and actually is in the real exorcism diary what happened to that boy is happening to these kids back in 2000 wow. you know that was 1949 and it was happening to these children in 2010. when we start finding that stuff out that is like real evidence to me that is yeah real. That is like, hey, we got, I mean, we literally got something that proves either, you know, a sign of a, the devil or the sign of a savior because, you know, these kids, they're every, all coming of age. Every time they got the possessed, they wanted to kill somebody or yeah. stab themselves or, or yeah. actually rip flesh off of them. And every time they went into this spit, or they called possession, some of them actually wanted to kill their families. They would hear the sound of marching drums, the sound of a trumpet, the sound of an army coming. They all wow. said that none of them knew each other and none of them had never met or talked in the same room. They're all different locations. And that was overwhelming. They all said the same thing like that. They said a lot of other things too that they were doing, like they were cutting themselves. They were living in dark areas, listening to very dark type metal music. But when they said that about hearing the sound of a trumpet, it really rung a bell to me where, where did that come from? And then I realized 
Ronald, who was the boy that was possessed in the Exorcist, in the Exorcist diary. Exorcist, in the Exorcist diary, it says when Ronald was possessed, he heard the sound on the army, the sound of a marching drum, the sound of a trumpet. Wow. That really just gave me goosebumps. And then if you look in the Bible, it's in the Bible too. Isn't that crazy? But it never says if it's Satan or we'll use the word dark is coming or mm -hmm. God is saying or positive energy, whether you believe in God or not, positive energy, I'm going to send you the sound of a trumpet knowing that you know, you beware, and the sound of an army is going to come and help you. Or it's Satan's legion is coming. I have not really figured out whether it's a sign of God's coming or the sign of the devil's legion's coming. But they yeah. said that, and it's in the Bible as well. And in yeah. the Bible, it says that it's God is coming to help you from evil. So I found that very fascinating, yeah. uh, intense. Yeah, especially I've since drums have been around since, you know, man could come out of a cave. And probably they actually played some sort of drums back then, too. Well, that, that's that my would instrument. I, that's the only thing I can play well. <laughs> that would explain why drummers are the way they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm a drummer. Drum <laughs> uh, a lot of the objects I've dealt with in the past. I've noticed a codependent relationship the owner has with that object. Oh, what, the, what the object is a little more uh, positive mm -hmm. or, or neutral, they lose interest in it. That whole thing about yep. energies being able to attract each other, negative attracts negative. Yeah. And positive attracts positive. I don't know if Motown's positive, but I sing the hell out of it. Oh, it definitely <laughs> is. Motown is positive. Motown is awesome because I, I have to tell you the well, um, you know, this is a little this is a little funny thing. Do you know that uh Tommy Chong was a studio musician for Motown? The comedian? No, yeah. I didn't know that. Yes, That's he was. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you couldn't I bet you couldn't see anything in that studio due to all the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you gotta imagine that was probably like just like Scooby Doo's van opening up just smoke pouring out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I have to say though, too, the objects that I have around, the ones that I feel nothing about, or the ones that I feel dark, I usually I, I, I get I get rid of them. The ones that are sure. really like make me feel like this, and I'm not saying I just know that there's an energy like this voodoo doll sure. that's in here. And if you study voodoo dolls, you've got to understand that they're made, voodoo dolls are made mostly to protect, but you can invoke a curse out of them. You can yes. turn, yeah, you can. But again, it's up to a person with a gun. He can protect or he can kill. That's exactly right. Yes. You know, whenever mm -hmm. he's saying trying to take guns away, well, listen, that's not going to stop somebody from killing people. You know, you either kill with a gun, or you protect with a gun. With a voodoo doll, you can either protect or you can call, try to cause harm. And you're right. It's all intent of what your intent is with that object. It's it's beautiful how energy actually works. You know, now we're getting to science stuff, but it is. Yeah. If you put off positive energy toward that item and it gives you the same pleasure or the same feeling, you know, you want to keep something like that. But if it's got a negative vibe, you want to get that as far away from you as you can because it just attracts more negative. Well, don't you think it's negative when, anyway. when you meet somebody? You know when you meet somebody and you just can't stand them? Or you get a headache I, when you're not, Or they yes. drain you? Yes. You know, that's your gut intuition that you're feeling. You should mm -hmm. listen to that and just say, listen, you don't have to be rude Every or anything. Time. You just say, hey, no, it, it, great meeting you. I'm out of here. You know, uh, well, you myself, guys, I can, yeah, I can know within five seconds if I'm going to like you or not because of the way your energy comes off. If you've got just some feels, feels like a telegraph going off, I'm like, no, I'm done. I'll yeah. be cordial to them, but I'm done with them after that. I don't want them to do it. But if your energy is positive, I'll be your friend till the day you die. I turn southern. I just oh, bless your heart. Yes. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. That's translation. Uh, 
that's translated fuck you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. That all that is that is a southern nice way of saying fuck off. It's like, <laughs> oh, if, bless if I say, you. oh, bless your heart, that's a positive one. Bless I go, your heart. Oh, bless yeah. your heart. That one's the bad, the bad one. <laughs> Well, thank you. It's so funny. You can do that with a smile on your face while you're telling them to fuck off. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you for inviting us to this. Yes. Thank you for being here, guys. On. You guys so, have, have always been an inspiration to me. I love your movies. I love your dedication and your history. You, you go back and research everything. That is what I love about it, you guys. Because oh, you're not sitting there <laughs> trying to just make, you, you know, that's filming for 30 minutes and like go to commercial. You guys actually yeah. research what you're doing. So that's why I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so and your much. films yeah. are just phenomenal. I have everybody I've talked to, I recommend, hey, go check out the Book Bros. They got the best paranormal movies and they do their job correct. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you for your interpretation. And keep your up the music. I know you're not getting paid that much, but please keep your music going because we <laughs> oh, need that I, music. I, I, for I, the don't do, I don't do music for money. I do it because I really love it. It's kind of like my therapy, too. Thank you. You know, and the, dude, you know, I, and that's my therapy is get on a pair of drums and just beat the living shit out of them. I get my Rex. <laughs> Hi, Rex. This is Rex. Yeah. He's one of our hey, I had to I had to jump in. It's been so long since we've seen each other and talk. I, I had to jump in quick before you get Rex, to I, I, I remember you. We had some great times, right? At the shows. Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah, yes, you we gave, did. Rex gave, gifted me some of his incredible artwork, which I have in my living room. Thank you, oh. Rex. I wanted to say yeah. that. Yeah, he's welcome. done our logo. Uh, family spirit yeah. logo uh he's done the cover of our one of my books and many pictures yes. inside and uh he's done the next one that's about to be released yeah rex is a sweetheart we've always uh we always yeah. kind of got close when we met yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's a rex good man. Is people. Doing? <laughs> i try i just had my first book published of my art oh very good congratulations congratulations thank nice you time the second one should be out by the end of July. I just oh, have a couple cool. more things to do, and it'll be out. We got to go ahead and promote it right now. Where Where is it going to be at? <laughs> I, uh, you can get it on Amazon.com, um, my first one. It's uh, Unexplainable Art in Black and White. Oh, wow. Um, it's uh, beautiful. You can get it there, or yeah. you can contact me um, at my uh my awesome email <laughs> it's readymix65 at gmail.com <laughs> if you Ready get it for me <laughs> um uh it's personalized i'll sign it and personalize it and mail it straight out to you oh very cool he oh. did a beautiful job with this book and are you going to be for... at silicon this year rex um i don't know i'm gonna try um things have been a little difficult here the last couple of months so um i'm trying to fit in as much as i can gotcha. um i have to go back in for surgery in november um oh, no. to have my other knee replaced and get oh. that out of the way so gotcha i'm trying to get in much in as i can before the you know i my end of my year is usually october and then i'm done i because of the holidays and everything i stop after that anyway but yeah i'm gonna try so we don't get out much because we've been doing all these shows. So we're doing three shows this year, Silcon, Scarefest. Um, which Scarefest, we hope to be showing our new movie, Never Blink, at the film nice. festival there. Oh, and, that'd be great. Uh, Mid-Michigan, which is, uh, they're having us back, which is always a great show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they, so many nice people. Very. And they really appreciate the, you know, the occult there when you go there. They're very into it. So being closer to Canada, I think they were into that. I don't know. It, yeah, Canada loves that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, thank you guys. Thank Rex, you. Yes. It was great seeing you again, my friend. Okay. Good to see you too. Well, thank thanks you both to us too, man. We appreciate yeah, y'all. Gorgeous as ever, thank my you. love. Gorgeous oh, as ever. Oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Those that guys was are just amazing. Wonderful. Oh my god. Yeah. Sorry, I had I had to jump in. Rex, Rex, <laughs> no way. Hey, hey, brother, you're part of this show too. 
Absolutely. Hey, hey anytime Hello. we can bring the people on the show, hi, Chris. But uh, yeah, dude, it's it's awesome. They are such great guys. I, I love talking yeah. all the hard stuff with them. Before we came on, I've I got, talked about music and stuff with them. And I've got a bunch of his stuff that he's auctioned off. I've got stuff from his movies, some of the sets, you know, props from his movies. Yeah. Um, you, you should see the pile of stuff I've got. <laughs> Of, I know. Uh, well, I know Thursday I'll be on Waverly. And, yeah, I'm gonna be looking for some of his uh, pagan jewelry. <laughs> oh yeah, because dude, I I, yep. I I love pagan jewelry. Uh, I, my daughter's got me something from Ireland when she went over, but she tell me what it is. But she did get me a flask from the Jameson Distillery in Ireland. In Grand, oh, nice. so I was happy about that. Yeah, I probably never put an ounce of liquor in just because it's. <laughs> she gave her then again with me you never know but <laughs> <laughs> but y'all that oh. was oh yeah rex hey i appreciate you too for uh doing our design for sacred intent too that thing is badass it's i uh, thanks i once i got into it uh, i was like you know because she wanted a thunderbird and yeah nobody really knows what it looks yeah, like we don't know about mm -hmm. that but that's the way that I viewed it. And that's Rick, the way I viewed it too. So yeah. yeah. So he he knew what I was wanting, and he made exactly what I wanted. I was so thrilled. Well, it, it will be it, it will be it will be based at at the uh, Deep South Pair Comic Con on August nineteenth and twentieth in Ozark, Alabama, Guys, by our I good friends you. from Web Radio Network. Go ahead, Lee. Yes, Web Radio Network, plug. wonderful people. I had to get that uh, plug in there. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to keep plugging. Uh, Stan and Teresa Fikes are wonderful, and yeah. they uh, are putting this together. Um, it's going to be bigger and better than ever. This is an annual event, and last year they outgrew the building about the first day. So they've got a bigger yes. building, and this is all a, a fundraiser for the boys and girls home. And isn't that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes. I, I thought I knew it was boys home, but I didn't know if it was girls also. But uh, yes, it's boys and girls Ozark, club, Alabama. Yeah. Yep. So please come by uh, my booth. Please do. Lane and I will have a big booth this year. I've yeah. got a lot of paranormal objects, obviously. I've got, you know, like tarot cards, my books, other mm -hmm. books, um, you know, dowsing things um, like, you know, the, the dowsing rods, things like that. But um, also, I've got a lot of Marvel and uh, mm -hmm. comic book type things. And Blaine and I have a line of jewelry. Well, it's not necessarily jewelry. It's actually a tool. But it's beautiful. And uh, we call them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Blaine. You named it. They are, co they are called Sacred Intent. Um, and I personally made every one of them. But I made sure that we're blessed by lee and matt um and myself and they got a whole bunch of good juju energy on them uh i just got to get with you later rex and see which two you want when i can get them mailed off to you oh <laughs> yeah it's gonna be great I, I, I gotta get the i gotta get the original picture your logo mailed off to you too oh just send it to lee because she's gonna bring it down with us if you don't mind yes yeah he said are, are you are you gonna are you going to reveal it at the at that event, or have you showed anybody yet? No, the, the only person that's seen it is me, you, and Lee. I think Matt. Matt has. So yeah, it will be unveiled, and it will go to every paranormal event. Brett, so it will be every event that, will, and we'll make sure they know. Hey, that was done by our. Good buddy Rex Nielsen. If you want yes. artwork done, please call him at 555 blah 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 blah. <laughs> I actually threw starving artist, so I may not look it, but I actually yeah. am so that's so cool. So hey, um I understand I, that. what do you think yeah. about I, I what do you think about the Booth Brothers ahead, guys? Sorry. Weren't they amazing? I'm sorry, Blaine. Uh I think I have a little delay Just on my unreal. part. Yeah, the Booth Brothers are amazing. Oh. Um, what do you think, Rex? Hey, what did you think, Christopher? I liked it, and 
and I got to say hello to Christopher. He recognized me. He said, it's been a while. Yeah, he's a good man. Christopher and Philip both are great guys. You know what I like most about what their mission is? Um, it's a lot like what Annalise felt. She said that if she could mm -hmm. prove that her situation was real mm -hmm. and there's there's true evil out there, then she felt like it, it's not that far of a jump to believe that there's a higher power. Yeah. If you can accept one, you have to accept the other. And she would yep she would easily which i don't feel it's easily uh because it was not an easy road for her but um she took that upon herself that's why she started showing signs of stigmata which is why she ended up being a saint mm -hmm. uh, the signs of stigmata with the piercings in the hand and blood and blood from the crucifying yeah. uh marks you know the crucifix marks on the hands and the forehead um it's an incredible story. And uh, so that, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for real paranormal activity and even allowing it to direct which way they go in the events that they do yeah. uh, and the awesome. filming they do. I just, it's always so fascinating to hear. And, uh, you know, I want to tell you something real quick. Um, your dad's here. Really? In my room. Yeah, I'm surprised. Well, I got the background in there, but he is he is watching us. I felt him over my shoulder. <laughs> and I've been in the swamps enough to know that smell because part of my family's from Louisiana. Your dad's been like he's been out chasing his snakes and alligators. I don't yeah, doubt he's, it. He's sitting, he's sitting right here, <laughs> like, right behind me. But he wanted me to let you know he's watching us on this I show. I appreciate you telling me. I have no doubt that that is correct because, you know, he came to you before and said marshmallows. And it was the day after we were eating marshmallows that had little caramel bites inside of it. Something really new. I got him thinking maybe we would roast them, roast the marshmallows. Yeah. But instead, the kids just dug the bag open and um, just ate them. <laughs> but, that just made, yeah, that yeah. made my day. It was like, Lee, this your dad have an association with marshmallows and you sort of just went blank faced on me. It was like, we just had marshmallows yesterday. How did you know that? I said, your dad told me. Yeah. The girls look like little chipmunks with their yes, they did. mouths full of marshmallows. <laughs> uh, those marshmallows are the big kind and they've got a little, little uh, dollop of caramel inside. Ooh. And so, um, mm. yeah, they were, they were tearing them up. That None could be to... for ice cream now. <laughs> So uh, for those of you watching and listening, um, I just wanted to say thank you for watching us. Uh, we are making a big splash now. It's not like it was uh, 10 years ago when we were on blog yeah. talk or yeah, uh, right. a live stream when everything had, you had to have every kind of thing possible known to man to even get it started. Um, oh my God. We are very happy to be on Roku and Amazon Fire Stick. <laughs> Um, yes. I, and thank you, Josh Who TV, for giving thank us 500,000 subscribers. Blaine, wow, I don't least. think I took, I didn't get to tell you that, but I checked our, our uh, folks in our channel over there, 500,000 subscribers, not followers. They are, they're, they're not liking, they subscribed. So, I just got chills. I mean, literally yes. got chills from that. I, that's fantastic, you guys. And wow. You. And you're part of it too, Rex. And, and Brandon, yeah. if you want to come on, come on. But, you know, this is a big thing. What we are doing is not unlike what the Booth Brothers mission is, which yeah. is to prove there is a such thing as the supernatural yep. and that we can heal and be a part of it. Because I've said this my whole life and I continue to say it. Mama Jenny said it. It's sort of a mantra with my family. Uh, healing comes in all stages of life, including death, and yep, you yes. can bless them. And I hope yes. that I am on the supernatural spectrum of things, and I hope these things, um, you know, are happy to meet all of us. You know, yeah. Blaine's great. Blaine is great at uh, spiritual warfare. I kind of like that myself. Rex is great at being able to heal. He is a healer. Yeah. Uh, Christopher is an analytical but yet creative thinker. 
And uh, I feel like, you know, of course, Brandon's a shaman. You're a shaman, Blaine. Yep. I am. Oh, yeah. So we're looking for healing in all forms of life. And we sure. are on a spiritual journey together. So yep. thank you, everybody, for, uh, you know, subscribing. Yay, yay. Yeah. yay. Our tribe is just getting so much better and bigger. And it is humbling for both me and Lee. Um, we love doing what we do. Yes. And if we, we could help one person, we could help one spirit, <laughs> it makes everything good. And we get to help so many people and so many spirits. And now people are actually coming in at 500 subscribers. That is amazing. Yeah. 500,000. <laughs> that is 500,000. That is wow. amazingly. Yeah. I mean, we, we started out, like she said, on Blog Talk Radio, dude. We might have. Two people listening, and usually it was the host and the person that did the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know how that goes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Blaine is is honest to a fault. Uh, hey, Margie, she did make it tonight. Hey, Margie, oh, there she is. Listen, I know you. Hi, David. Hey, I'm first. Arena. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Adriana. Oh, I think oh, Adriana. Adriana. Oh, well, if yeah, I could, that's... if I could speak, I'd be dangerously. I'm telling you. <laughs> You tickled me to pieces, man. Margie, if you missed the first hour, you're going to have to go back and watch it because the Booth brothers were everything. They yeah. are amazing. I thought Christopher was really something by himself, but holy crap, oh, you know, there's two of them. Both those two, the, like, energy that, oh my God. the energy that came off of those two was so good and positive and it brought hope. And I don't know, there's so many adjectives I can't even describe. But it was well, phenomenal. Not, yeah. They accept yeah. the supernatural and yeah. they plan to contribute to it. And they are not exploiting and spirits. So no, they do it's funny, they do the research. So they know the backstory of everything they film and try to get that in the film as well. Yeah. If y'all have never seen a Booth Brothers movie, please, please go watch it. Oh, That's yeah. what I'm doing tonight. Will not... When we get off here, I'm going straight to oh. Amazon Prime. Oh, I, have, I have all of them. Nice. <laughs> no, you don't. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. No, the, all the DVDs are signed by him, too. Nice. Yeah, I, need, I need to get that. I've been wanting to get that for quite some time. Um, that That's it. I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sending him a message right now. I'm not going to let the sun set on a good, uh, a good idea. <laughs> I'm sending him a message right now and yeah. also i want you guys to know that um about this time in our uh show we have a big influx of people watching That's so beautiful. i want to make sure that we continue to have something amazing to um uh, talk about uh we do have a lot of things coming up oh, uh, you yeah. want to talk again about the paracon lane okay. and i'll tell you about the other well, stuff i'll pull it up all right let's see okay august 19th and 20th we had the para comic con and their website is paracomicon.com and this time i talked to stan and Teresa last night and I, this is some of the things that are going to be there okay they are going to have over 40 haunted items there uh some of it's pretty significant i'm not going to give anything away but i'll just tell you there's going to be haunted objects there there are a bunch of new food vendors come in this year. There are a bunch of vendors. And I, when I talked to Stan and Teresa last night, they basically said, hey, it's just it's taking a life of its own. I said, I told you all that at the end of last year. I said, it's going to start slow, and then it's going to come down like an avalanche. And that's exactly what's happening now. And I'm so proud for them because they are such great people. And if you get to come down there, meet Stan and Teresa, meet their whole team. They are some of the best people that I know. And, and Lee loves, I lo they love Lee and Lee loves them. And oh, I, I love, love them, them so much. Oh, they are wonderful. Yeah, they, okay. Uh, we some of the guests are going to be there. Oh, oh, right on. Okay. And I'll tell you some of the things that are going to be there for guests. Okay. There's going to be Santiago Cirillo from The Walking Dead. He will be there. Sandra Thompson, who's played probably about seven or eight different uh, walkers on the show. She's one of the few that actually gets, you know, Nicotero to do the makeup on her. She's not CGI'd in there. So she's right. actually been there sitting at the desk of Nick Nicotero to get her makeup done. She looks like award winning makeup artist. 
Uh, Jeremy Leonard will be there. Leachana Brown and Matt Brown will be there. I'll be there. Uh, Brandon will be there. Brandon Cooper will be there. Uh, let's see who else I got on that. Uh, you got the Fox Family Paranormal is going to be great people. They were Those on Leash. Great people. Yes, yeah. I love I've them. I've investigated guys. with them um, at Pauling Jail a couple of months ago, and we had a blast. Oh, my God, we had a blast. Because uh, they were like, I don't know what it is. When we investigate with you or Lee, it's like stuff happens. I said, we don't do it. They just come around us. That's, but yeah, they, they are great people. Oh, uh, let's see who else is going to be there off the top of my head. Uh, they've got, oh, uh, Charles I'm trying to remember his last name. He's an anime guy. Charles. Oh, here, let me go to it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I see where you're headed with that. So the guest to, uh, at the Deep South Para Comic Con, which is August the 19th and 20th in Ozark, Alabama, and they include, it's loading, um, I think you've already said Jeremy Leonard, but I can't Jeremy. wait to see him. He I gets know. the best hugs ever. Yeah. Jeff Leeper and mm. uh, his, his lovely girlfriend, Maria Player. Yes. Uh, they are, he's a demonologist and she is a demonologist assistant and nurse. And uh, they are coming on the show, and they've got some really incredible and unique ideas about some investigations. I was, I'm was i very excited to hear those. We have Jennifer DeGeru. I'm not sure if I said uh, that right. Uh, DeRu. DeRu. Oh, I don't know yeah. what I, I threw an yeah. extra syllable she in there. Is, uh, She's um, a medium and Reiki. A medium medicine. and a, a Reiki healer. She has her own company called, um, oh, goodness. I, I, I can't help with that. I know. I just, I just, just you know, had a brain fart. Sorry. Um, dang it. It's okay. I can't remember. And I do apologize. That's all right. You're trying. I'm trying. I see it there, but I can't make. Universal works of healing. God, you idiot. <laughs> well, it's too small for me. I'm trying to blow it up. We have Santiago yeah, it... Cirillo and Sonia yeah. Thompson from The Walking oh, yeah. Dead. Um, lovely and beautiful Miranda Young. She is going to be coming oh, on the show so awesome. soon. She rides her motorcycle into small towns, finds out ghost stories uh, of the area, and then investigates them to give them a voice. How lovely. She's so awesome. Uh, I'll be there. Connie Koenig will be there. She'll be coming with uh, Dave Childers. She is a certified hypnotherapist. Um, Let's see. David Childers is he was okay. on season two of the Haunted Hospitals. Yeah, and, and um, David Childers right now. David Childers right now. He just had his appendix removed, uh, and his part of his uh, intestines again. So yeah. you guys send all all healing and prayers toward him to help him heal. Um, he I've been getting updates on him, and he got out of surgery, and they didn't get everything out. And he was a little, a lot, a little, a lot disappointed because he wanted to eat the cheese. We couldn't eat nothing, still hospital food. And I feel you there, brother, because I think I would rather eat dirt than eat hospital food ever again. Now, he missed <laughs> Gettysburg, and that was heartbreaking yeah. for him. Um, he's uh, he had his appendix out, but they left the stump. I called him. We talked for like an hour, and um, right he's he's pissed because he already had the, his appendicitis surgery. Yeah. And, that, mm -hmm. and now here he is again, and it's because they left the stump. And it and it did it again. It got inflamed and nearly ruptured. So, yes, please keep him in your prayers that he doesn't kill somebody while he's at the hospital. Because they left him in pain for 38 hours, Blaine. 38 oh, no, no, no. hours. So, no, I'm yeah. sorry. Somebody would have got 38 hours worth of ass whooping if they left me in pain. Well, that's where he hours. was. He, he, came <laughs> up out of his, he came up out of his bed and took his little uh, IV pole and walked out into the hallway. He sure did. He got him some Something help. Something I would they, do. He came out and was like, I am so sorry when he came out of surgery. But he said the pain had just made him just crazy. Oh, poor um, guy. Yeah. And please be sure to continue praying for me as I'm recovering from surgery. Every day, um, my sister. Yeah, I had one hernia, and it turns out that when they went in, it was significantly, quote, significantly more difficult than what they said it would be. I had four. And so, you know, it's, I'm no spring chicken either, but, you know, the body heals as it heals. So, 
with that um, fact that I've got one and that's bad. I, just, I couldn't imagine having four of the damn things. Yeah, I don't like horrible. the one I got. Four of them are like, no. I'm already grumpy <laughs> enough as it is. Give me something else to give me pain. I'll be more grumpy. Oh, I, I forgot <laughs> to mention. Uh, there it is. Um, we've got, what's his name there? Jonathan Odom. Jonathan you, Odom. He of is. Course. Jonathan See, Odom that's is uh, an Alabama a crypto guy. guy. Crypto guy, and he also runs, um, oh, goodness, my brain tonight. Alabama, uh, Weird Alabama. He runs a Weird Alabama as well. Oh, well, we have Jess Alabama Elliott. Like um, they've got oh, a, yeah, whole Jess, section of, awesome. a whole section of authors. There's Jess Elliott, and she's Hedonistic Hound Press, which mm -hmm. I didn't know the name of that, so I'm very excited. Uh, Kevin yeah. Kane, which I've talked, I hadn't talked talked to him in years he wrote the paranormal uh haunted dolls and then there's the spirit paranormal research organization and um they're being featured in the author section and then teresa she is a published author yeah. of the paranormal yeah. and how-to books and she also does romance novels and survival books so there's going to be a lot of books there uh, blaine and i are releasing our book before we uh, go to the Paracon because we're taking it with yeah. us. Um, it is psychic children. Oh, so you think you've got a psychic child? <laughs> Basically, is the oh, name you of think it. You got a psychic kid. Yeah. Oh, we've been there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, David is uh, uh, one of our followers, and he's also been a guest on the show, and he's been a, a student of mine and Blaine's. And he's saying, please pray for him. He has to have surgery on August the twenty fourth. David, so, already done, buddy. I've amen, already sent brother. you more healing powers and more positive energy than your whole body can handle, but I did it anyway. Good work, Same Blaine. Yes. What, brother? Good work, Blaine. Thank you. Hey, yeah. drop your uh, your uh, camera down just a little bit, Chris. There I you go, because all, all I could see was the really top good. of your head. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see you. I also, like, oh, um, thank I, you. Had, I had a bad week because of the heat. Oh, I'm sure. Dude, I'm you'd sure. have died down here. So. <laughs> Maybe you would have, because you're in, in Philly area. Pennsylvania yeah, because you're from Philly. Honey, it was 110 here. Yes, with 100% humidity. And you walk outside, it feels like you just took a shower and sweat because, bam, as soon as you walk outside. That was just like a, a heat index here, her intent. And I, when I went out in it today, I felt like I couldn't breathe. And we also had that brush fire smoke from oh. Quebec. Yeah, that's rough. Um, that thing's um, still burning. I figured they'd have that out by now. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Elliot. Dr. Elliot Van Dusen is in the Nova Scotia area. And oh, he's really? been sending me videos. Mm. And he was driving down the road and, and he was, his wife had the cell phone and you could just see miles and miles of burn. And he said, burn to a oh. F crisp, you know, and I was like, wow. yeah, it's going to be rough. Um, also, please be praying for one of our uh, regular um, viewers that enjoys our show. His name is Roger Sumner and he said he has to have more chemo. So uh, Roger, we praying right now and sending up, Roger, I, um, I, I'm definitely seeing you healing, brother, because I, I, I'm a cancer survivor, and I got lucky with mine. They called it time, and they took it out of me, but I didn't realize when they did, I had a lymphoma cancer on my left neck side, uh, left part of my back part of my left tongue was, was had cancer, and my left tonsil had cancer. They got them all out, so I never had to go through chemo or anything like that, and I think I just would would move to Florida and uh, got me a medical marijuana card because I, I I'm sorry I don't I don't like radiation and I I, well, I hope I that it to. does good for you, Mr. Roger. Oh, I know. There's no problem of you mentioning that here. It's we're trying to get it legal here for everybody. When, oh, it should um, be legal. You know what? In the 30s, it was legal. I've actually got a pack of marijuana cigarettes from the state of Alabama that were. Issued in like 1928. They have a tax stamp on the bottom of it. Tax it like they do alcohol. If, if you want to smoke it, smoke it. If you don't, don't, don't have to. But Well, all of that happened because of the hemp corporation. You got it. No, the, well, the, the cotton industry 
sued because hemp was actually a stronger fabric. It was a stronger fiber, and it was less DuPont. to produce it. DuPont. DuPont, yes. DuPont, it, it got, you know, since they had all that money, went in there and got every senator and congressman they could pay off, and that's why they uh, um, made marijuana illegal mm-hmm. because it was ruining the cotton trade. I'm like, you know, both of them still could have survived. I agree. I mean, you choose if you want so, cotton, if you want him. I know you guys saw me freaking out when we just brought the Booth brothers on at the beginning of the show. My front door opened wide open. Bam. What? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, we heard true. some last night at two o'clock, I heard the doorknob turning and the dogs, uh, I've got my daughter's dogs and they were freaking out. And uh, we were all sitting here. I had taken a nap earlier in the day. I had a blistering headache and I was working on her mm. book. It was two o'clock in the morning and um, I was sitting here. I had music on. I wasn't watching TV or anything. And I saw, I turned because I heard something hit the door first. And then I turned like that and I saw the doorknob turning and a lady, which is she's part Cocker Spaniel. She saw it. Pippin went running to her because he was going to protect us. And Ginger, mm. my little Ginger, she she turned around. We all three went, you know, or four, kind of whipped around there. And I said, oh, my God, because the dogs aren't going to lie about something. Yeah. You know, they're going to react nope. to what they hear. I I, t- I got my butt baseball bat and went out the front door. I tell you what, my next the next sound they heard from me was chunk, chunk. Shotgun yeah. going on. Pull back a I clip. Was, <laughs> I just grabbed my bat and went out the front door, but you know, mm-hmm. I've got that too. And I, you know, because of do that, that tonight. Speaking of experiences, the other night, I actually had a dream about my great, great, great grandfather. See, you can tell that your family communicates to you through your dreams. And uh, so that's one of the things that Blaine was talking about earlier your ancestral family communicated. He mentioned, he also called me out by name when I was awake. Oh my gosh. Um, and he, he, and I finally learned where the Frank Cure name comes from. It's from the south of France. Okay. Well, Blaine is uh, part French. Um, from, from the province of Brittany? Yeah. No, uh, mine is mainly from uh, uh, Alps, Paca, Cote, Azure, and Monaco, which is about 500 miles south of your ancestral home. Mm-hmm. I, um, I, I did want to let you know, Roger, that, that was talking, you were talking about your chemo. I did not have chemo, but I did have radiation. And, uh, you know, that's tough. It's really tough. And your skin changes uh, almost permanently. And your hair does weird stuff with radiation. Mine got crazy curly. I have to straighten mine all the time. So I'm going to do a card. Okay. Just a card for everybody. Uh, Yay. Let's see. Da, 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 da. A card for the night. You ready, Christopher? Yeah, I'm curious because I'm being told I should think about going home if things change. Well, this one is the only card I pulled for tonight, and it's interesting that it popped up uh, when it did because of the Booth brothers being our guests. This is air, the element of air. You can see the dancer, and she's yep. spinning around. Oh, my goodness. There we go. She's spinning around, and you can see the air wisping around her and the leaves around her. And when you get the uh, air element involved in anything, uh, but particularly with these cards, um, it means creativity. And here we are talking about the Booth brothers. And I had them on my brain when I pulled the card. It wasn't nice. just for us. But the, um, the ancestors are your spiritual kin. And we're just talking about that with Christopher. And here we are. Okay, say, this is the first card, okay? They are the ones who walk before us and in some way help shape our lives as what we are today. You're being asked but to uh, you are being asked to honor your ancestors, keep their keep their memory alive and spirits and give thanks to them. 
Many indigenous people and cultures around the world do this. And in following this tradition, you're being asked to partake in a timeless connection through which the ancestors can impart their wisdom and assist you with your spiritual journey. I'll be damned. What the hell is that? My phone just went crazy. Oh, okay. I was just like, oh, when man. We started talking about that stuff. It went berserk. See, it happens every every show. Yep. I should have told was, that. Chris, what, I mean, uh, Lee, what was so cool about what you just read? Okay. Air. Okay. The whole time I've been sitting there since your dad showed up, it's I, I, in front of me. I can feel air in front of me. I've got a fan on behind me, but it's hitting the back of me. It's not going anywhere in the front of me. And I got my arms up here and my arms, uh, the hair on my arms is standing straight up. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It, I'm sure. It, 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 see, I was about to ask you too. Um, did your dad have a friend that smoked cigars? Oh, yes. Okay, he's with them too. I am I, not surprised at all. I, I can and, smell it. it, it I, I love the smell of, of cigars, especially for good cigars. And this is a good one. It's not no cheap, you know, blunt or <laughs> just one of no. $5 cigars you get. No, this is a classy cigar. He spent money on these. Yes, I mean, he, he, this man yeah. always spent money on his mm -hmm. cigars. Yep. His name was uh, Glover. Okay, Glover. I don't okay. remember okay. his last name. But that's that's what he said. I'm Mr. Glover. Thank you. Yes. He's bald, and um, yes. he's Seminole Indian, and yes. he used to take care of um, Tractor, the alligator. He was 14 and a half foot alligator. He weighed 973 pounds, and he fell in love with a tractor tire and ripped it off the tractor, and that's where he got his name from. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> he, he ripped that and if anybody touched that tire or came close to it he would flip out so what do you, what do you do well, you know the funny thing is um the truck drivers when they have their retreads come off they actually call them gators <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah if you look if you think about it, when you see an old tire track on the road it looks like a damn gator it does and that's no, just... that's what that's about so <laughs> All right. That, now, interesting that when we first started the story about this card, the reading was talking exactly about what you've been saying, what the Booth brothers said, and then what you were saying to Christopher. And then what he started talking about, once again, it's all in sync. And then it goes on to say that your healing ancestors are enabling you to break free of any destructive patterns and step into the freedom your soul yearns for. And I said that about being a healer remember yes, you did. so it's still oh. we're still in sync so it's saying call upon your wisdom of your ancestors and honor yourself and them for never giving up as you walk wisely in their footsteps the old ones left you a great legacy of ancient wisdom to live by these ancestral memories created an oral tradition that was passed down within clans and tribes of their descendants oh my god this is a really great one i'm getting chills everywhere in every blade Me of grass, too. every sacred mm -hmm. site and voice in the wind, the ancestors speak of ancient ways mm -hmm. and future wisdoms. You hear that, Christopher, buddy? That's for you. Yep. So we're going to light a candle. Let's light, light a candle tonight. Uh, all of you, sure. please do this with us. It's something simple. Light let a me, candle in remembrance. Let me bring one thing up today that I forgot. Okay, we're talking about air. When I went out to get my mail today, there was a nice hawk feather sitting on the ground i picked it up that has to do with air because they use the feathers to get up in there and fly Holy that's exactly shit. right so you were getting the message before we ever started the show here's the wow. poem you ready christopher yes once made like you of blood and bone from earth but now spirit flown honor who you truly are and wisdom claimed to take you far so it's saying claim the ancestral knowledge. Oh my goodness, what a chill. Roger says that he knows his sister's a spirit guide for him because he yes, senses her Roger. all the time and she's stopping mm -hmm. for a visit and sometimes she brings dad with him with her. Mm -hmm. I know that Roger's David uh yes. David he has um his brother 
as a spirit guide. Mm -hmm. Hey, David, before you had it typed, I'm already talking about you. <laughs> and his his brother is with him all the time and yep. his brother's wife. So, mm -hmm. uh, Roger, you mm -hmm. and David have something in common. And interestingly, David's brother is named Roger. That is, that is cool. I think you guys need to become friends and see if you yes. have any other similarities. I, I agree. Yes, yes. I mean, nothing happens for nothing. That happened for a reason. You two need to be friends. Exactly, Lee. That is just yeah. perfectly said. And, and I have enjoyed this show so much tonight. Me too. Uh, and let me tell you who's next. Uh, I oh, love the Blue Brothers. Do. The energy that yes. they put off is oh. unbelievable. Um, I really like their message about possession. Do, they, they are just awesome. 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 So uh, next, where are we? Next Monday, the 24th, we will have Mason Winfield. And Ooh. he is, he does the incredible newsletter and uh, com communications for Lily Dale. If you don't know oh, who, yes. what, what Lily Dale is, please take oh. the time to look it up. Lily Dale yes. is a psychic city. Everybody yes. there is a psychic and they have workshops and all types of things there. And he coordinates those as well. He is the author of Iroquois Supernatural. Um, Mason is, and he actually in, interviewed God knows how many uh, indigenous people to get the message that he put in his book. That's about, I guess right about two, it's like, you know, two, three inches thick. It's a thick one. So um, he's got a lot of knowledge. He's extremely uh, communicative and expressive. He's good friends with Robert Young. So hopefully we will have right him on. on. And Anne Marie well, Young says that her lights just started yes, flickering. Listen, I said, this show is like the supernatural hub of weird stuff happening when we do a show. I love well, it. I know people say that about the streaming. And yes, you know, you end up getting a uh, priced. Uh, what you could usually have for like 500,000, you know, people watching your movie and having mm -hmm. 500,000 now streaming your show. There's a big difference in pay, but yeah. if you really are passionate about your message, it's a great way to get it out. Like what we're doing. Um, location means nothing. We're all here together. Anne Marie, I love it. Uh, David, yeah. uh, we had Bobby earlier. We always have, um, there's, there's several others that I've been, uh, Margie, you know, she's been back and forth. And this is just on this chat that has nothing yep. to do with what's going on on Josh Who and um, on yeah. Roku Facebook, and Fire Facebook Stick. Live and yes. So there's all of those. I really, in, speaking of streaming, I'm really impressed at, that the Booth Brothers on Tubi is such an accessible platform. Tubi. Yeah, I, I, I am too. And, and Tubi, you guys that don't know, Tubi is free. It does not cost you a dime. It just costs you about two minutes of your time to download it. That's it. I and didn't you, know that. Yeah, Tubi, uh, Pluto are both free streaming services. They have different channels on them. It, like, I love um, like old cop shows like Adam 12 and Dragnet. Oh, I'm going to be watching that. Or fire, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I can get all those and watch every episode and it'll start streaming one. Like I love this show from the sixties and seventies called dark shadows about so, Barmas. Yeah. Oh, I and love they, that. Yeah. That tells Those, me a lot about the booth brothers. They really yeah. want their work to be accessible. They want to share it. And, and I, I love that for them. Plus, I really I, love I really, that. Yeah. Cause now they're getting out. Uh, their movies do damn well. Um, so, now that they're streaming, it's going to be greater. Uh oh, I boo booed. Hold on. What you did? Oh, uh, am I back? Uh, you never yeah, left. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we've got Mason Winfield uh, on the 24th, which is a week from today. The next week is Bill Bean. We got Brother Bill coming on. Yes, All right. I can't wait. And then the next week we have the one, the only. David Omen. Now, those of you the listening, watching, you may not know who David Omen is, but you know who the Manson murders affected. Okay. Oh, and oh. you know about Sea Big Drive? 
Okay, well, he lives there now, and he's been on every documentary of the supernatural in history that's known to man. Okay, he's been on them, all of them. He's yeah. investigated with the best. And I've actually he'll seen. Be on. I've actually seen the property he built there. Yeah. See, well, well, actually, no joke. Yeah. Ten zero zero five zero Cielo Drive in Los Angeles, California. Mm -hmm. I, I know the place well because I mm -hmm. I actually have. 12,000 pages of the Manson trial. Well, get it ready. Get it ready. Oh, I, we, so I don't the need it. I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I've, well, I've read a lot of books about it. So Mason Winfield on the 24th. We've got uh, demonologist Bill Bean on the 31st of July. Then we're going mm. into August. And, you know, I'm going to be getting ready for Halloween. We have mm. David Omen. Uh, from California, talking about the Manson murders and the hauntings that he lives in daily. We'll have mm -hmm. Mike Ricksecker on the 14th, who is my publisher with Haunted Road Media. Uh, we have uh, Brandon Alvis, who was Ghost Hunters, and now he's doing uh, Ghost, was it uh, Haunted Discoveries? And he'll be making oh, nice. some announcements. So that'll be great. So that's the next month in Roundup. And we right. have just a few minutes left, and Brandon. I, I did want to, uh, yeah, I did want to say something. So, uh, you mentioned Mason Winfield. Y'all keep an eye open. Um, I can either confirm nor deny that me and Mason are actually working on a project. Yeah, so, you told me. yeah. So, uh, stay tuned. Yes, yes, and he's a fantastic guy, full of knowledge. Right on about the indigenous people. Um, oh. And uh, we're, we're going to have a great show when he comes on. We're going to have a great show, period. So, I can't wait till you have a show with KD on here. He yeah. is great. Oh, we'll get KD yeah. back. Don't worry. Yeah, he's hey, coming. Brandon, do you want to start us off on our announcement? Yeah, we've, we've got a few tonight, minutes. Or do you want me to do it tonight? Let's do a little quick one because uh, I have I know we had like 30 minutes worth before. Go ahead and do okay. it, Brandon. Uh, he's got himself muted. I think he's on the okay, phone. Okay, I'll... Okay, I'll go ahead and take care of this. Then. Okay, I do this every week, and this is something near to my heart, Lee's heart, Chris's heart, Brandon's heart, and Rex's heart. If you're very thinking true. about committing, if you're thinking about committing suicide, please, 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 talk to somebody. There's always somebody you can talk to. There's a number you can call. It's nine eight eight. If you don't want to talk, you can text. But it's not run by a bunch of little kids working with Telecenter. It is actual psychologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, rabbis, priests, preachers, uh, shaman, anything you think of. If you have a religious belief, they probably have somebody that will talk to you. Okay. I, myself, Lee, Brandon, Chris, Drex, if you need to talk to anybody, shoot us a message. Because I would I would rather hear you talk today than read your eulogy tomorrow, okay? There's because so many people right now that are facing... Uh, mm -hmm. this, um, actually, they're being oppressed. Yes. And, and there's a lot of people that are depressed. And it's terrifying mm -hmm. to me. Um, I, I'm going to just it, say this. It is. Because I've been holding it, it back. Because... Um, I want to say this because I've been kind of holding this back. I, I do believe what the Booth brothers has, has been trying to say, and it's been their message for so many years. If you feel that dark depression over you, it's because something really negative happened to you. And yeah. if you counter mm -hmm. it with something equally as positive, it has a tendency to level it out. So if you've got if you've got moments of of terror, moments of depression, moments of being mm -hmm. startled and frightened. Make it a mission to write it all down. And then as you have something equally as positive, scratch it out. I say wipe it on, yeah. uh, you know, write it on toilet paper and use it. That negative yes. stuff, that's yep. where it needs to go. Right down yep. the toilet. Okay. I also exactly. remember we have the dominion over the spirit world. That's right. Well, I'm yep. going to do my Native American blessing and we will call it a night. Thank you, everybody, for listening to us. Um, you can go on any uh, social media platform that I know of right now uh, in order to watch the show. Uh, there's YouTube and um, uh, gosh, just name it. I've been posting it everywhere. If you enjoyed the show tonight, please feel free to smash that like button. 
uh, share it and invite your friends because, you know, our message is always positive and always with love and light. Okay, so our prayer tonight is the prayer for the earth. Earth, teach me stillness as the grasses are stilled with light. Earth, teach me suffering as the old stones suffer with memory. Earth, teach me humility as blossoms are humbled with the beginning. Earth, teach me caring as the mother who secures her young. Earth, teach me courage as the tree which stands alone. Thank you for listening to Family Spirit International. Night, y'all.